The craziest part of the school day by far is lunch, where chaos reigns supreme. Yet what unfolds behind the scenes is a hidden world that would send shivers down your spine. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Lunchtime at my school was a circus with three shows daily. There were three to four hundred students with one or two administrators trying to babysit the group at each lunch. The odds weren't good. The lunchroom was a rectangular room connected to the foyer. The opening was the length of the room so the students could get in and out quickly and easily. The lunch line was located at the rear with approximately 45 tables in the middle. The principal on duty perched at a tall table in the foyer like a hawk surveying a meadow. Lunch duty was painful. Lunch duty in a campus this size is really painful. The lunchroom is a world unto itself. Every principal knows there's no way to control this many students. The thin veil of order relied on the provision of food and the delicate balance of granting students just enough freedom to entertain themselves. I knew that every day was one day closer to the next time someone would lose their mind. The absolute worst thing at lunch was a food fight, followed closely by a regular fight. This is why discipline for throwing food was administered with prejudice and without exception. Throwing food was dealt with severely. Other lunch rules included no standing and only moving around if you asked for permission. A standing student would draw an immediate request to park it. Years of lunch duty had taught me to watch students hovering over other students at lunch. Trouble was usually not far behind. Yet, behind the facade of this controlled chaos lurked a darker reality. The half hour at lunch was a hub for illicit drug activity. Despite our best efforts and hours of watching security video, the lunchtime drug trade went mostly unabated. Some joked, without humor I might add, that you could get any pill you wanted at lunch. You only had to have the going price, which was $5.00 and be willing to ingest something that had probably spent time in a sandwich bag inside somebody's underwear. It was a cat and mouse game and the mice were kicking our butts. And now for today's story. One eventful day, a radio call alerted me to a medical emergency in the nurse's office. Rushing to the scene, I encounter Little Mary. Little Mary was a freshman girl who probably didn't weigh 90 pounds soaking wet. She sat in a chair next to the nurse's desk. Her head and shoulders bobbled back and forth like the little dog in the front window of my grandpa's old Chevy. She was having a great deal of trouble holding her head up, and when she attempted to speak, her words sounded like someone letting the air out of a balloon. I immediately told the nurse to call 911, but as the words fell out of my mouth, I heard her explaining to the dispatcher to send an ambulance. My philosophy about calling 911 was to never get permission. Like Nike, just do it. I would much rather apologize to an EMT than apologize to a grieving parent because I was afraid to ask for help. While we waited for the cavalry to arrive, I asked the young lady if she had taken something. She was very chatty, but almost impossible to understand. She said she had taken some mysterious pill she bought, unsurprisingly, at lunch for $5. She even volunteered that she had bought it from little Joey. When I spoke to her, she continued to try and rest her elbow on the desk so that she could prop her head up on her hand. She missed her hand with her head after several tries and almost fell out of the chair. If the nurse hadn't been there taking her blood pressure, she would have probably taken a header. As the situation spiraled, the urgency became palpable. The color ran out of the nurse's face. She told me that she was not able to get an accurate blood pressure. It was too low. She suddenly started interacting with the students so that she didn't lose consciousness. The nurse was patting her on the shoulder and the face and then making her stand up. She wobbled like a marionette with its strings cut. We took her under both arms and led, well, drug her around the room while she mildly objected, saying she just wanted to go to sleep. The ENT showed up a few minutes later and without delay strapped her on a gurney, started an IV, and blazed out of the parking lot. It was about that time our school resource officer, or SRO, returned to our campus. The SRO was a city policeman whose beat was the school district. I explained to him what had happened. I said we needed to contact little Joey to find out what he had sold little Mary, then forward the information to the hospital. Little Joey leaves school early every day for a school-sponsored work program. The SRO called the place where little Joey worked and was very direct with him. Joey? Little Mary had a bad reaction to whatever pill you sold her. What kind of pill was it? The dealer's response was as breezy as it was predictable, claiming he knew nothing about it. The SRO growled in the phone, Listen, Little Mary was taken out of the school on a gurney. If she dies because you wouldn't tell me what she had taken, the best you can hope for is manslaughter. 
but it could be murder too. Now, what was it? His response was as frightened as it was immediate. It was some kind of pilfered heart medicine from his grandfather's house. Little Mary got her stomach pumped and was a guest in the local hospital over the weekend. Little Joy was fortunate that Little Mary didn't have permanent damage or died. As it was, Little Joy didn't darken the school's doors ever again. He was placed in an alternate education program, or jail school as the students called it, for the remainder of the last year of his high school career. Mary and Joy's little escapade didn't make a wave, since talking about it was all kinds of federal privacy violations. But you can bet the kids knew. Of course, that didn't stop the situation from reoccurring almost exactly the same way just a few weeks later. Life at school resumed its rhythm and the lunch circus resumed its schedule. And I had lunch duty the next day like nothing happened. You can't make this stuff up.